despite the availability of pre-implantation genetic screening, which is the main technique that's used where the, the normalcy of the embryo's chromosomes are assessed, um, not everybody needs it. And the big, basically the comparison is to look at an individual couple, their age, their reproductive history to decide who would benefit from having the advanced techniques of, of genetic studies. Uh, the geneticist would argue that no matter who you are, you're going to have a better outcome with doing PGS than not. But the difference between what the expected pregnancy rate with, without the PGS versus that with the ongoing pregnancy rate and the live birth rate, it's going to be very small for a couple who has no pre-existing pregnancy losses where there is, there's, there's no severe male factor and the woman is relatively young. Um, on the other hand, if it's a younger couple who's had several unexplained miscarriages, those may be due to chromosomal abnormalities. And even though the, each, each partner is normal, coming together they may generate more abnormal ones. So that would be someone that would be indicated. And then it's the age factor. Where's the point at which reducing the probability of a miscarriage to 10, maybe 15% at worst, makes it worthwhile to use PGS and generally it's someone who's in their, their mid to late 30s for the most part. The, uh, the, the person who's uh, 40, it's pretty clear cut because they're, at that point, the miscarriage rate may be anywhere from 30 to 50%. And that number may actually, the lower end of that number may actually extend to people even at 36 or 37. So I always think in my mind, 37, 38 is kind of the break point where I present it to couples. I certainly tell all couples this is the option but at 38 and above, I say this is a situation that may actually help you um, not only get pregnant, but to have a, a healthy baby. Um, there are individuals who would never terminate a pregnancy, so that the ability to tell someone that their risk of an ongoing pregnancy having an abnormal fetus, say with Down syndrome, has been reduced by 85 to 90 percent, where they wouldn't automatically do chorionicville sampling or amniocentesis, and if the couple wouldn't terminate, you could bring that risk down to one in hundreds, so the probability of something being missed would, would be very, very tiny. So that's something at any age, couples who are actually fertile would use IVF with, uh, with pre-implantation genetic screening in order to, to select the gender, and also get the information that is going to make sure that this, again, even at any age, is going to improve the likelihood that it's going to be a normal pregnancy.